Mouthwash, Wikipedia article audio. Mouthwash, mouth rinse, oral rinse, or mouth bath, is a liquid which is held in the mouth passively or swillied around the mouth by contraction of the perioral muscles and slash or movement of the head, and may be gargled, where the head is tilted back and the liquid bubbled at the back of the mouth. Use Benefits and Side Effects History Research Ingredients Alcohol Antibiotics Benzalconium Chloride Benzidamine Slash Diflam Benzoic Acid Betadine Betamethasone Calcium Cetylpyridinium chloride Chlorhexidine digluconate and hexetidine Diphenhydromine Domifen bromide Edible oils Essential oils and phenols Fluoride Flavoring agents and xylitol Glucocorticoids Hydrogen peroxide Lactoperoxidase Lidocaine-slash-xylocaine Maalox Usually mouthwashes are antiseptic solutions intended to reduce the microbial load in the oral cavity, although other mouthwashes might be given for other reasons such as for their analgesic, anti-inflammatory or antifungal action. Additionally, some rinses act as saliva substitutes to neutralize acid and keep the mouth moist in xerostomia. Cosmetic mouth rinses temporarily control or reduce bad breath and leave the mouth with a pleasant taste. Methyl salicylate Nistadin Rinsing with water or mouthwash after brushing with a fluoride toothpaste can reduce the availability of salivary fluoride. This can lower the anti-cavity remineralization and antibacterial effects of fluoride. Fluoridated mouthwash may mitigate this effect or in high concentrations increase available fluoride. A group of experts discussing post-brushing rinsing in 2012 found that there although was clear guidance given in many public health advice publications to spit, avoid rinsing with water slash excessive rinsing with water they believed there was a limited evidence base for best practice. Persica or alum Providun slash iodine Common use involves rinsing the mouth with about 20 to 50 ml of mouthwash. The wash is typically swished or gargled for about half a minute and then spat out. Most companies suggest not drinking water immediately after using mouthwash. In some brands, the expectorate is stained, so that one can see the bacteria and debris. Mouthwash should not be used immediately after brushing the teeth so as not to wash away the beneficial fluoride residue left from the toothpaste. Similarly, the mouth should not be rinsed out with water after brushing. Patients were told to spit don't rinse after tooth brushing as part of a National Health Service campaign in the UK. Gargling is where the head is tilted back, allowing the mouthwash to sit in the back of the mouth while exhaling, causing the liquid to bubble. Gargling is practiced in Japan for perceived prevention of viral infection. One commonly used way is with infusions or tea. In some cultures, gargling is usually done in private, typically in a bathroom at a sink so the liquid can be rinsed away. The most common use of mouthwash is commercial antiseptics, which are used at home as part of an oral hygiene routine. Examples of commercial mouthwashes companies include Pacol, Colgate, Corsidil, Dental pH, Listerine, Odal, Oral-B, Seracin, Scope, Tantum Verde, and Biotene. Mouthwashes combine ingredients to treat a variety of oral conditions. 
variations are common, and mouthwash has no standard formulation so its use and recommendation involves concerns about patient safety. Some manufacturers of mouthwash state that antiseptic and anti-plaque mouth rinse kill the bacterial plaque that causes cavities, gingivitis, and bad breath. It is, however, generally agreed that the use of mouthwash does not eliminate the need for both brushing and flossing. The American Dental Association asserts that regular brushing and proper flossing are enough in most cases, in addition to regular dental check UPS, although they approve many mouthwashes. For many patients, however, the mechanical methods could be tedious and time-consuming and additionally some local conditions may render them especially difficult. Chemotherapeutic agents, including mouth rinses, could have a key role as adjuncts to daily home care preventing and controlling supragingival plaque, gingivitis, and oral malodor. Minor and transient side effects of mouthwashes are very common, such as taste disturbance, tooth staining, sensation of a dry mouth, etc. Alcohol-containing mouthwashes may make dry mouth and halitosis worse since it dries out the mouth. Soreness, ulceration, and redness may sometimes occur if the person is allergic or sensitive to mouthwash ingredients such as preservatives, coloring, flavors and fragrances. Such effects might be reduced or eliminated by diluting the mouthwash with water, using a different mouthwash, or foregoing mouthwash entirely. Prescription mouthwashes are used prior to and after oral surgery procedures such as tooth extraction or to treat the pain associated with mucositis caused by radiation therapy or chemotherapy. They are also prescribed for aphthous ulcers, other oral ulcers, and other mouth pain. Magic mouthwashes are prescription mouthwashes compounded in a pharmacy from a list of ingredients specified by a doctor. Despite a lack of evidence that prescription mouthwashes are more effective in decreasing the pain of oral lesions, many patients and prescribers continue to use them. There has been only one controlled study to evaluate the efficacy of magic mouthwash, it shows no difference in efficacy among the most common formulation and commercial mouthwashes such as chlorhexidine or a saline-slash-baking soda solution. Current guidelines suggest that saline solution is just as effective as magic mouthwash in pain relief or shortening of healing time of oral mucositis from cancer therapies. The first known references to mouth rinsing is in Ayurveda and Chinese medicine, about 2700 BC, for treatment of gingivitis. Later, in the Greek and Roman periods, Mouth rinsing following mechanical cleansing became common among the upper classes, and Hippocrates recommended a mixture of salt, alum, and vinegar. The Jewish Talmud, dating back about 1,800 years, suggests a cure for gum ailments containing dough water and olive oil. Before Europeans came to the Americas, native North American and Mesoamerican cultures used mouthwashes often made from plants such as Coptis trifolia. Indeed, Aztec dentistry was more advanced than European dentistry of the age. Peoples of the Americas used salt water mouthwashes for sore throats, and other mouthwashes for problems such as teething and mouth ulcers. Anton van Leeuwenhoek, the famous 17th century microscopist, discovered living organisms in deposits on the teeth. He also found organisms in water from the canal next to his home in Delft. He experimented with samples by adding vinegar or brandy and found that this resulted in the immediate immobilization or killing of the organisms suspended in water. Next he tried rinsing the mouth of himself and somebody else with a mouthwash containing vinegar or brandy and found that living organisms remained in the dental plaque. 
he concluded correctly that the mouthwash either did not reach, or was not present long enough, to kill the plaque organisms. In 1892, German Richard Seifert invented mouthwash product Odal, which was produced by company founder Karl August Lingner in Dresden. That remained the state of affairs until the late 1960s when Harold Liu demonstrated that a chlorhexidine compound could prevent the buildup of dental plaque. The reason for chlorhexidine effectiveness is that it strongly adheres to surfaces in the mouth and thus remains present in effective concentrations for many hours. Since then commercial interest in mouthwashes has been intense and several newer products claim effectiveness in reducing the buildup in dental plaque and the associated severity of gingivitis, in addition to fighting bad breath. Many of these solutions aim to control the volatile sulfur compound creating anaerobic bacteria that live in the mouth and excrete substances that lead to bad breath and unpleasant mouth taste. For example, the number of mouthwash variants in the United States of America has grown from 15 to 66 to 113. Research in the field of microbiota shows that only a limited set of microbes cause tooth decay, with most of the bacteria in the human mouth being harmless. Focused attention on cavity-causing bacteria such as Streptococcus mutans has led research into new mouthwash treatments that prevent these bacteria from initially growing. While current mouthwash treatments must be used with a degree of frequency to prevent this bacteria from regrowing, future treatments could provide a viable long-term solution. Alcohol is added to mouthwash not to destroy bacteria but to act as a carrier agent for essential active ingredients such as menthol, eucalyptol, and thymol which help to penetrate plaque. Sometimes a significant amount of alcohol is added, as a carrier for the flavor, to provide bite. Because of the alcohol content, it is possible to fail a breathalyzer test after rinsing although breath alcohol levels return to normal after 10 minutes. In addition, alcohol is a drying agent, which encourages bacterial activity in the mouth releasing more malodorous volatile sulfur compounds. Therefore, alcohol-containing mouthwash may temporarily worsen halitosis in those who already have it, or indeed be the sole cause of halitosis in other individuals. It is hypothesized that alcohol mouthwashes acts as a carcinogen. Generally, there is no scientific consensus about this. One review stated, There is now sufficient evidence to accept the proposition that developing oral cancer is increased or contributed to by the use of alcohol-containing mouthwashes. Whilst many of these products may have been shown to be effective in penetrating oral microbial biofilms in vitro and reducing oral bacterial load, it would be wise to restrict their use to short-term therapeutic situations if needed. Perhaps the use of mouthwashes that do not contain alcohol may be equally effective. Further, mouth rinses should be prescribed by dentists, like any other medication. There may well be a reason for the use of alcohol-containing mouth rinses, but only for a particular situation and for a limited and controlled period of time. As such, Patients should be provided with written instructions for mouthwash use, and mouthwash use should be restricted to adults for short durations and specific, clearly defined reasons. It is the opinion of the authors that, in light of the evidence currently available of the association of alcohol-containing mouthwashes with the development of oral cancer, it would be inadvisable for oral health care professionals to recommend the long-term use of alcohol-containing mouthwashes. The same researchers also state that the risk of acquiring oral cancer rises almost five times for users of alcohol-containing mouthwash who neither smoke nor drink. In addition, 
the authors highlight side effects from several mainstream mouthwashes that included dental erosion and accidental poisoning of children. The review garnered media attention and conflicting opinions from other researchers. Yinka Ebo of Cancer Research UK disputed the findings, concluding that there is still not enough evidence to suggest that using mouthwash that contains alcohol will increase the risk of mouth cancer. Studies conducted in 1985, 1995, 2003, and 2012 did not support an association between alcohol-containing mouth rinses and oral cancer. Andrew Penman, chief executive of the Cancer Council New South Wales, called for further research on the matter. In a March 2009 brief, the American Dental Association said the available evidence does not support a connection between oral cancer and alcohol-containing mouth rinse. Many newer brands of mouthwash are alcohol-free not just in response to consumer concerns about oral cancer, but also to cater for religious groups who abstain from alcohol consumption. In painful oral conditions such as aphthous stomatitis, analgesic mouth rinses are sometimes used to ease pain, commonly used before meals to reduce discomfort while eating. Acts as a buffer Betamethasone is sometimes used as an anti-inflammatory, corticosteroid mouthwash. It may be used for severe inflammatory conditions of the oral mucosa such as the severe forms of aphthous stomatitis, 209. Cetylpyridinium chloride containing mouthwash is used in some specialized mouthwashes for halitosis. Cetylpyridinium chloride mouthwash has less anti-plaque effect than chlorhexidine and may cause staining of teeth, or sometimes an oral burning sensation or ulceration. Chlorhexidine digluconate is a chemical antiseptic and is used in a 0.12 to 0.2% solution as a mouthwash. However, there is no evidence to support that higher concentrations are more effective in controlling dental plaque and gingivitis. It has anti-plaque action, but also some antifungal action. It is especially effective against gram-negative rods. The proportion of gram-negative rods increase as gingivitis develops so it is also used to reduce gingivitis. It is sometimes used as an adjunct to prevent dental caries and to treat gingivitis periodontal disease, although it does not penetrate into periodontal pockets well. Chlorhexidine mouthwash alone is unable to prevent plaque, so it is not a substitute for regular tooth brushing and flossing. Instead, chlorhexidine is more effective used as an adjunctive treatment with tooth brushing and flossing. In the short term, if tooth brushing is impossible due to pain, as may occur in primary herpetic gingivostomatitis, chlorhexidine is used as temporary substitute for other oral hygiene measures. It is not suited for use in acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis however. Rinsing with chlorhexidine mouthwash before a tooth extraction reduces the risk of dry socket a painful condition where the blood clot is lost from an extraction socket and bone is exposed to the oral cavity. Other uses of chlorhexidine mouthwash include prevention of oral candidiasis in immunocompromised persons, treatment of denture-related stomatitis, mucosal ulceration erosions and oral mucosal lesions, general burning sensation and many other uses. Chlorhexidine has good substantivity. However, chlorhexidine binds to tannins, meaning that prolonged use in persons who consume coffee, tea, or red wine is associated with extrinsic staining of teeth. Chlorhexidine mouthwash can also cause taste disturbance and slash or alteration. 
Chlorhexidine is rarely associated with other issues like overgrowth of enterobacteria in persons with leukemia, desquamation, and irritation of oral mucosa, salivary gland pain and swelling, and hypersensitivity reactions including anaphylaxis. Hexetidine also has anti-plaque, analgesic, astringent and anti maloder properties but is considered as an inferior alternative to chlorhexidine. Antihistamine In traditional Ayurvedic medicine, the use of oil mouthwashes is called Kavala or Gandusha, and this practice has more recently been remarketed by the complementary and alternative medicine industry as oil pulling. Its promoters claim it works by pulling out toxins, which are known as AMA in Ayurvedic medicine, and thereby reducing inflammation. Ayurvedic literature suggests oil pulling is capable of improving oral and systemic health, including a benefit in conditions such as headaches, migraines, diabetes mellitus, asthma, and acne, as well as whitening teeth. Sanguinarin Sodium benzoate or methylparaben Sodium bicarbonate Sodium chloride Sodium lauryl sulfate Sucralfate Tetracycline Trinexamic acid Triclosan Zinc Oil pulling has received little study and there is little evidence to support claims made by the technique's advocates. When compared with chlorhexidine in one small study, it was found to be less effective at reducing oral bacterial load, otherwise the health claims of oil pulling have failed scientific verification or have not been investigated. There is a report of lipid pneumonia caused by accidental inhalation of the oil during oil pulling. The mouth is rinsed with approximately one tablespoon of oil for 10-20 minutes then spat out. Sesame oil, coconut oil and ghee are traditionally used, but newer oils such as sunflower oil are also used. Phenolic compounds include essential oil constituents that have some antibacterial properties, like phenol, thymol, eugenol, eucalyptol, or menthol. Essential oils are oils which have been extracted from plants. Mouthwashes based on essential oils could be more effective than traditional mouth care, for anti-gingival treatments. They have been found effective in reducing halitosis and are being used in several commercial mouthwashes. Anti-cavity mouth rinses use fluoride to protect against tooth decay. Most people using fluoridated toothpastes do not require fluoride-containing mouth rinses, rather fluoride mouthwashes are sometimes used in individuals who are at high risk of dental decay, due to dental caries or people with xerostomia. Flavoring agents include sweeteners such as sorbitol, sucralose, sodium saccharin, and xylitol, which stimulate salivary function due to their sweetness and taste and helps restore the mouth to a neutral level of acidity. Xylitol rinses double as a bacterial inhibitor and have been used as substitute for alcohol to avoid dryness of mouth associated with alcohol. Hydrogen peroxide can be used as an oxidizing mouthwash. It kills anaerobic bacteria, and also has a mechanical cleansing action when it froths as it comes into contact with debris in mouth. It is often used in the short term to treat acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Side effects with prolonged use might occur, including hypertrophy of the lingual papillae. Enzymes and proteins such as lactoperoxidase, lysozyme, lactoferrin have been used in mouth rinses to reduce oral bacteria and hence the acid produced by bacteria. Local anesthetic Antacid Multiple functions, antiseptic, anti-inflammatory, analgesic, 
flavoring, and fragrance methyl salicylates have some anti-plaque action but less substantivity than chlorhexidine. They do not stain teeth. Nystatin suspension is an antifungal ingredient used for the treatment of oral candidiasis. A 2005 study found that gargling three times a day with simple water or with a povidone iodine solution was effective in preventing upper respiratory infection and decreasing the severity of symptoms if contracted. A later study found that the same procedure did not prevent influenza-like illnesses. Other sources attribute the benefit to a simple placebo effect. Sanguinarin containing mouthwashes are marketed as anti plaque and anti malodor. It is a toxic alkaloid herbal extract, obtained from plants such as Sanguinaria canadensis, Archmony mexicana, and others. However, its use is strongly associated with development of leukoplakia, usually in the buccal sulcus. This type of leukoplakia has been termed sanguinaria-associated keratosis and more than 80% of people with leukoplakia in the vestibule of the mouth have used this substance. Upon stopping contact with the causative substance, the lesions may persist for years. Although this type of leukoplakia may show dysplasia, the potential for malignant transformation is unknown. Ironically, Elements within the complementary and alternative medicine industry promote the use of sanguinaria as a therapy for cancer. Sodium bicarbonate is sometimes combined with salt to make a simple homemade mouthwash, indicated for any of the reasons that a salt water mouthwash might be used. Premixed mouthwashes of 1% sodium bicarbonate and 1.5% sodium chloride in aqueous solution are marketed although pharmacists will easily be able to produce such a formulation from the base ingredients when required. Sodium bicarbonate mouthwash is sometimes used to remove viscous saliva and to aid visualization of the oral tissues during examination of the mouth. 4. Salt water mouthwash is made by dissolving 0.51 teaspoon of table salt into a cup of water which is as hot as possible without causing discomfort in the mouth. Saline has a mechanical cleansing action and an antiseptic action as it is a hypertonic solution in relation to bacteria, which undergo lysis. The heat of the solution produces a therapeutic increase in blood flow to the surgical site, promoting healing. Hot salt water mouthwashes also encourage the draining of pus from dental abscesses. Conversely, if heat is applied on the side of the face rather than inside the mouth, it may cause a dental abscess to drain extra orally, which is later associated with an area of fibrosis on the face. Gargling with salt water is said to reduce the symptoms of a sore throat. Hot salt water mouth baths are also routinely used after oral surgery to keep food debris out of healing wounds and to prevent infection. Some oral surgeons consider salt water mouthwashes the mainstay of wound cleanliness after surgery. In dental extractions, hot salt water mouth baths should start about 24 hours after a dental extraction. The term mouth bath implies that the liquid is passively held in the mouth rather than vigorously swillied around which could dislodge a blood clot. Once the blood clot has stabilized, the mouthwash can be used more vigorously. These mouthwashes tend to be advised about six times per day, especially after meals to remove food from the socket. Sodium lauryl sulfate is used as a foaming agent in many oral hygiene products including many mouthwashes. Some may suggest that it is probably advisable to use mouthwash at least an hour after brushing with toothpaste when the toothpaste contains SLS, since the anionic compounds in the SLS toothpaste can deactivate cationic agents present in the mouth rinse. However, many of the popular mouthwashes also contain SLS as an ingredient.
Sucralfate is a mucosal coating agent, composed of an aluminum salt of sulfated sucrose. It is not recommended for use in the prevention of oral mucositis in head and neck cancer patients receiving radiotherapy or chemoradiation due to a lack of efficacy found in a well-designed, randomized controlled trial. Tetracycline is an antibiotic which may sometimes be used as a mouthwash in adults. It is sometimes used for herpetiforme ulceration but prolonged use may lead to oral candidiasis as the fungal population of the mouth overgrows in the absence of enough competing bacteria, 209 erythromycin is similar. 4.8% trinexamic acid solution is sometimes used as an antifibrinolytic mouthwash to prevent bleeding during and after oral surgery in persons with coagulopathies or who are taking anticoagulants. 473. Triclosan is a non-ionic chlorinate bisphenol antiseptic found in some mouthwashes. When used in mouthwash, there is moderate substantivity, broad-spectrum antibacterial action, some antifungal action and significant anti-plaque effect, especially when combined with copolymer or zinc citrate. Triclosan does not cause staining of the teeth. The safety of triclosan has been questioned. Astringents like zinc chloride provide a pleasant tasting sensation and shrink tissues. Zinc when used in combination with other antiseptic agents can limit the buildup of tartar.